Grace be with all of us on this beautiful day. Amen. Rumors began to circulate. Disaster seemed to be at hand. Reports of impending doom appeared, and evidence began to pile up. Something just wasn't right. The experts denied the reports and the evidence. They said, there's nothing to worry about. Everything's going to be all right. Just go on about your lives as you always have. Well, we now know that these experts were lying. It was the 30s, the 40s, and the 1950s, and tobacco industry ads actually were doctor approved at the time, believe it or not. But as the evidence between smoking and cancer began to grow, the public started to worry. And so the tobacco companies in response began to hire doctors, health experts, to tell people that smoking was okay. Only a few of the doctors lied, but too many of them remained silent. And back in those days, there was no Snopes, there was no factcheck.org, there was no PolitiFax or any other easily accessible fact-checking site to clear the smoke and break the mirrors of their lies. So as a result, many were led astray by plausible, well-crafted lies. An expert said it, so it must be true. Well, when we hear of prophets in the Bible, we most often think, I would imagine, of those experts in our spiritual health. The same was true in Jeremiah's day. A guy would hang out his prophet shing shingle, he'd dream a little dream, and what he spoke must have been true, because he's a prophet after all. Well, the problem was that the profit business could be mighty lucrative if you said the right things to the right people. There were kings bent on evil who liked those prophets who told them whatever they wanted to hear. And the people with their immoral lifestyles sought out those prophets who would support their sin-filled desires. But just because a prophet said it, didn't make it true. The false prophets lying, the smoke in the mirrors, led people astray. But God had no patience for these liars. And through his prophet, Jeremiah, the one we heard from today in our Old Testament reading, God issued a stern rebuke, saying, they, those false prophets, Say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, no disaster shall come upon you. Like the doctors used by the tobacco industry, these prophets, with their smoke and their mirrors, led God's people into impending disaster. Disaster foretold by Jeremiah with these words, behold, the storm of the Lord, wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. And just as promised, the latter days appeared. As many of God's priests stood by silently, knowing full well of the lies being told and of the wrath to come, God's people continued to follow the false prophets into the disaster Jeremiah warned of. Babylon conquered them. Babylon dragged them off into exile in chains. And they destroyed their temple in Jerusalem. 
though God had no desire to see his people punished. It was the people's choice to ignore him, to ignore his signs, to ignore his messengers, and to ignore his word. With hardened hearts, they suffered the consequences of their ignorance. They experienced the hard truth of God's wrath in exile. You and I, we can find ourselves or those around us that we love in a kind of exile too. There are modern false prophets, people Satan uses to lure God's faithful children away from him, away from the counsel of his word, away from the fellowship of his people. But God knows our weakness. He knows how easy it is for us to fall for those soft words of those false prophets. And he wants to protect us from the smoke and mirrors that camouflage these false prophets' lies. This is why God commands us. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. You shall remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In these ways, God commands us to fear, love, and trust him above all others. To not be deceived or to deceive in his name. And not to despise his word, but to hold it sacred and gladly hear it and learn from it. Still, how many people do we know whom we may have let be drawn away from God by sin-filled devotion to the false gods of this world and their prophets? The God of substances and material goods, promising comfort and happiness. Maybe it's the God of work and achievements, promising security and prosperity. Perhaps it's the God of sports and entertainment, promising an escape from the ordinary and the unpleasant. How many do we know whom we have let be drawn away from God by sin-filled distractions that keep them from gladly hearing God's word, from learning it, and most importantly, from applying it, all of it, even the parts we find difficult, unpopular, and unpleasant. How often, longing for peace in our lives and an end to conflict with those around us, have we been unable to raise our voices against the false prophets' smoke and mirrors? Satan would like for us to believe that there is no consequence for our sin. That we can just remain silent. It's okay. Satan is the one who says these words, it shall be well with you. No disaster shall come upon you. And so rather than make waves by gently restoring those who are led away into sin, do we stand by in silence, letting them get hopelessly lost in the smoke and mirrors of Satan's lies, falling deeper and deeper into sin and further and further away from God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, sin is real. Sin has consequences, both in this world and in eternity. Unchecked, sin leads all into God's wrath. Exile, storms, and finally, into judgment 
and eternal fire. Yet, even as we and those we love might languish in exile, trying to navigate storms of our own doing, God promises to be with each and every one of us along the way. Our God is not some detached, uncaring, unfeeling God. Our God wants us to remember that no matter how far away he might seem at this instant in our lives, he is right there with us. Through his prophet, he tells us, Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. God is everywhere we are. He is waiting for us to turn back to him. God desires to lead us through the smoke and mirrors into his peace, his eternal peace. And yet in today's gospel, we hear Jesus, God's own son, say these words. I came to cast fire on the earth and would that it had already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Many of you may know firsthand that war is the ultimate division. It is a conflict between at least two parties, and in war, there is blood that is shed, and there is death that happens. And ever since Adam and Eve fell from grace, God's creation has been united with Satan in, and his false prophets in conflict, in war with God. Jesus entered this conflict in his baptism. When Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan, God joined him with humanity and all of our sins. And Jesus carried those sins with him throughout his ministry. As Jesus healed the sick, as Jesus forgave sins, as Jesus raised people from the dead, he began to gradually loosen the bonds of sin and death that Satan has used to bind us to him in his conflict with God. In the end, it might have appeared that Jesus was just another casualty of war as he was sentenced to death on a cross. Jesus carried that cross, still bound tightly to our sins, to the top of Mount Calvary. And there he faced the fiery wrath of God on our behalf. In the baptism that Jesus dreaded, that he spoke of in our gospel, Jesus was drenched with his own blood and the fiery wrath of his father as he cried out for all to hear. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he cried out in a loud voice, it is finished. And he died. But in crying out those words, Jesus announced his victory over Satan, sin, and death. The perfect son, covered in all of our sin, finally and completely through his selfless sacrificial death on the cross, 
release all mankind from the power of sin to control us. And rising to new life, Jesus opened the only way through the smoke and the mirrors into eternal life with him. In our baptisms, God cleanses each and every one of us from the effects of our sin. In our baptisms, we are joined with Christ's righteousness. God adopts each and every one of us as his very own children, his sons, his daughters. You are his, a part of his family. And he fills us with the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that enables us to go through life as we fear, love, and trust God above all things. It is the Holy Spirit who enables us to not be deceived by those false teachers. And it is the Holy Spirit who enables us to gladly hear and learn from God's word. The Spirit guides us through the smoke and mirrors of Satan's lies. And though on occasion we get turned around in the smoke and mirrors, on occasion we may fall silent in the face of Satan's attempts to bring peace in this world as we let others and ourselves even be drawn away from God. God continually calls us back into his presence. And in that presence, God forgives us. And by the power of his word, by the power of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are nourished to once again speak his word faithfully and boldly in the world through our thoughts, words, and deeds. And though it will not be popular, trust me, it will cause division today. He is with us always as we gently show others their sin. And as we lovingly invite them to return to God, to receive his forgiveness along with us. And one day, they and all of us will be brought through the smoke and the mirrors into God's eternal peace. No longer divided, but united with him and all of the saints in the new heavens and the new earth. A crystal clear reality of the kingdom of God. And now may the peace of God and our Lord Jesus Christ equip all of us to do good in his name, according to his will. Amen.